welcome to all of you a very good afternoon to you all uh, first of all i'd like to apologize for the slight delay uh, in starting our program so welcome to today's session on biodiversity of andaman and nicobar islands the first in the series of events which we hope will be contributing to a greener earth and a sustainable future let us start with a moment of silent prayer Please be seated. We'll be uh, starting within a few minutes. So, without much ado, I would like to welcome you all to this event. Reverend Fartin, uh, Father Martin K, the principal of our college, is a driving force. He is committed towards a green campus and a greener earth. I welcome you to this gathering, Reverend Father. Dr. Vinoy Seyaf, the Dean of Sciences and Head of the Department of Zoology, is an ecologist in his own right and is therefore very interested in contributing to a sustainable future. I welcome you, sir, to this gathering. Our resource person today is Dr. C. Shiva Parma. He is currently working as Scientist E and Officer in Charge at Zoological Survey of India, Andaman and Nicobar Regional Center, Port Blair. If I were to do justice to all his credentials, it would take at least one hour to read out all that he has accomplished for biodiversity, ecology, and conservation. But I'd like to give you all a very brief overview about our resource person before welcoming him. He did his master's degree in wildlife biology from Bharti Darshan University, Tamil Nadu. He took his PhD from KFRI, PG, Forest Research Institute University, Dehradun. He served as an expert consultant in the committee for CPCSEA, the Ministry of Environment, during 2006 and 2008. Since 2008, he is working in Andaman and Nicobar Islands. He has extensively surveyed different ecosystems, and as a result of which, he has published various papers, more than hundreds and hundreds of papers, in addition to the 40 books which he has authored and edited. He is a recognized supervisor for PhD research under Pondicherry University, and already nine students have completed his PhD under, under him. Some of the things which you, my students, would be inspired to hear about him is that he participated in the 36th Indian Scientific Expedition to Antarctica during 2016 2017. Uh, he has won very many awards and fellowships. The major among them are Fast Track Young Scientist Fellowship 2006 and 2013 from DSD, Japan International Cooperation Agency Fellowship in 2011, Fellow Award from Endeman Science Association for his outstanding contribution in science, Fellow Award from the Indian Society of Orchidology for outstanding contribution to the island ecosystem, the Molecular Systematics Laboratory in ZSI Port Blair, and National Coral Reef Research Institute at the island are all his brainchild. He has also reported more than 80 new records from India towards various formal groups. He has more than 100 international invited talks and paper presentations to his credit. He has completed 10 externally funded major research projects. But most important of all, he's a very simple down-to-earth person who is ready to help and mentor others. Sir, it's a privilege to have you with us. I welcome you, sir, to St. Thomas College, Trishur. In addition to us online are many eminent researchers. I'm just reading through the names. This also includes Dr. Isa, who was the former uh, head of the Department of Wildlife Care for I, and so many other people in the Google Meet here, sir. I welcome all of them to our midst. 
I also welcome all my colleagues, students attending offline at our college, external participants in the online mode, our technical staff to this gathering. Thank you so much. Uh, I invite Dr. Benoit, Dean of Sciences and Head of the Department for the Presidential Address. Principal, or Dr. Martin Colombras, distinguished scientists in the Google Meet, in the online mode, in the distinguished speaker, Dr. Siva Perman, who is my old friend and my brother. Uh, we have done research together in KFRI. Convener Dr. Joyce, other faculty members, and their students. So, this is the seminar on biodiversity of Andaman and Cobar Islands. And I think you have heard that uh, or the theory of island biogeography. So, how many of you have heard that? Theory of island biogeography. So, it is an important theory in ecology. And it was put forward by two eminent ecologists. One is Robert MacArthur and the other one is Edward O. Wilson. So both these are doyens of ecology. And I think my MSc students will recognize uh, Robert MacArthur. He is famous for his MacArthur's warbler, uh, the fugitive uh, birds, which has contributed to the resource partitioning of, uh, I mean, uh, that, that resource partitioning theory. Inequality. So, uh, I think we have an eminent resource person who can talk about the insular fauna, the fauna of a island. And I think uh, I have the good fortune of visiting uh, Lakshadweep Islands a few years back. That is with uh, our own MSc students of that time. Uh, so, uh, the island. Biogeography as well as the island fauna is very much different from what we see in the terrestrial ecosystem. So, Andaman is another archipelago where you can see more than 500 little, little islands, and of which only 37 have been inhabited. Or there is only 37 islands which were, which were inhabited by the human uh, population, and the other islands are not inhabited. And we know that. Uh, tropical evergreen forests are also there in uh, Andaman Islands. And also, uh, that island is a part of a, I mean, a, a seismic uh, erosion or a volcanic eruption parties that part of the islands are susceptible to occasional volcanic. So, that also contributes to another important process that we have studied or the, 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 the students of zoology we study. That is ecological succession. I think uh, most of the MSC students will be familiar with the term ecological succession. So we, we, we know that a succession will start from the bare area. So the formation of a bare area will be the starting point for succession. So again, Enderman is one point where you can see such succession of organisms can be found. So in that aspect, this Enderman Islands is very unique. And uh, we have the good fortune of having a person who has uh, the first hand information on the uh, fauna and flora of, uh, of uh, the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. So I, I am very much happy that this uh, particular event, uh, this particular seminar, will be an uh, I mean, enlightening opportunity for all the participants, especially our students, uh, who will be getting a first hand information on the insular fauna of particularly the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. And uh, as I already noted, Dr. Sivar Perman uh, is a, uh, I mean, I think he knows Pichur very well. He was in Kayafari and he has done his PhD in the fall wetlands of Pichur district. Uh, that is in the Tanani and Amal, that area he has done his PhD on the migratory birds. So he's very much familiar with our college as well as the, the terrain, the locality of Pichur. And uh, one of my, my uh, classmates, uh, he is in Panyani, Mr. Saigo, 
uh, he was uh, actually helping him, uh, Dr. Sivakarman, during those days, uh, with the local support and all those things. And then he was doing his PhD, uh, the, the research work in Kanyani uh, for wetlands. So uh, I I think uh, we have met, uh, I met Dr. Sivakarman last uh, during 2011. That is in Coimbatore uh, during an uh, international conference in IFGTD. I think uh, he is there. And it is a long gap. After a long 11 years, we are meeting. That is through the online mode. But I think uh, this meeting will further, uh, uh, will be further forgery. More tie ups with uh, the, the Zoology Survey of India as well as the Andaman. Uh, I mean, uh, even uh, you can think about uh, some expedition uh, if uh, somebody is interested to the Andaman region uh, so that we'll be having a more fruitful experience and the sharing experience uh, with the diversity of those areas. So, with this brief note uh, and uh, complimenting the organizers and the convener for uh, selecting this topic, I take this opportunity to thank uh, Dr. Superman and also uh, the, the convener and also I think this will be an opportunity for the participants uh, to get a, get a broader idea on the island fauna as well as island biogeography. So with these words, uh, I remain. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, sir, for your valuable words. Now I invite Reverend Dr. Martin K., our principal, to symbolically inaugurate this event by delivering the inaugural address. Everyone, good afternoon to one and all. Dr. C.F. Binoy, the story of the kind of zoology as well as the dean of science. Dr. Chandraga Sinsi of Pirman, scientist E and office in charge. So I got Survey of India and the Nanikawara Regional Center for Player, resource person of the day, Dr. Joyce Kloss, the coordinator and their faculty members, such as scholars, their students, participants, both um, online and uh, offline mode. When we are, we are the, the only species, I think, who are able to study other species on the earth. Most that every human beings are studying all other species. But um, uh, and we, when we analyze, we, we do not come across with any other species studying human beings in return. So that's what the, the thought which um, strikes me now. Uh, and we hope that uh, no other species are uh, observing us, studying us. But we do not know. Sometimes on the dogs and the other species around us maybe studying humankind, the way of behavior. And these days, the changes which have occurred to the human beings or the behavioral pattern of human beings towards other species during these uh, years. But I have one more um, thought about uh, maybe some other, um, what do you call them, um, uh, uh, extraterritorial, uh, people or uh, beings, they must have been, they must have been uh, studying even the human beings. They must, if they are present here, they may be invisible, you know, we cannot all see them, but they may be uh, studying human beings as well as other beings in the species, uh, in this world or in this on the face of the earth. So today you have a, a real opportunity to be familiar with the biodiversity which is prevalent in and the Nanakobar Islands and we have a uh, very eminent scientist of Chandra Sioperman also the friend of our to enlighten you on the topic. Wishing you all the best and uh, just giving a precaution that uh, we alert this cozy atmosphere and uh, we, we attend you to the, the session and wishing you all the best. That uh, you be introduced to more and more species, variety of species, so that uh, your domain knowledge may be on the increase. Wishing you all the best and taking this opportunity to congratulate the coordinator as well as the team behind this program. I declare this webinar Biodiversity of Andaman and Nicobar Islands to be open.
Thank you. Thank you, Father. Now is the time which we all have been waiting for. Let's visit the Andamar and Nukaba through the eyes of our eminent resource person, Dr. C. Shiva Peruman. Very good afternoon. I'll share my PPT. <clears throat> Is it my slide is visible? Yes, sir. It's visible. It's visible. Sir. Okay. Okay. Thank you. First of all, I would like to thank uh, 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 officials of St. Thomas College for inviting me to deliver a talk on the biodiversity of Andaman Kubar Islands. So before coming to that biodiversity of Andaman Kubar Islands, a uh, uh, few slides uh, I would like to um, brief about Zoological Survey of India for the benefit of the students, those who are uh, watching in this uh, PPT, uh, this uh, seminar. Uh, um, yes, uh, this will be useful for the students for their future careers. So, if you see that Zoological Survey of India, uh, Zoological Survey of India was established in the year 1916. But if you go and see the genesis of Zoological Survey of India, it is originally started in the year uh, way back uh, 1784 under the banner of Asiatic Society of Bengal. Uh, up to 1874, we traveled uh, under the banner of Asiatic Society of Bengal. In the year 1874, we moved into the Indian Museum, Calcutta, where we have still uh, a zoological gallery uh, in Calcutta. Uh, those period, uh, Dr. Anand, uh, Nelson Anandale, uh, who was a superintendent zoologist uh, in the Indian Museum, Calcutta, in the zoological section, uh, his dream to bring a separate set of zoological survey of India, uh, like other survey of India, like uh, Forest Survey of India, Anthropology Survey of India, Archaeology Survey of India, Botanical Survey of India. Uh, his dream fulfilled in the year 1st July 1916. He brought a separate set of Zoological Survey of India and he served as a director until uh, 1924. Um, thereafter, after the independence, uh, our survey expanded uh, um, mainly across the country in different region and uh, yeah, different uh, political boundary as well as uh, different ecology region. If we see our uh, regional centers, uh, we have 16 regions regional center across the country, uh, our headquarters at Calcutta. We have regional centers at the desert region. We have high altitude region. We have Western Ghat also. We have a couple of regional centers. Uh, one is Calicut, another one is Pune. Then we have uh, regional center at uh, Hyderabad. In Chennai, we have a couple of regional centers. Then East to Coast, we have a few regional centers. Central region also, we have regional centers. And we are in uh, Andaman Nicobar Islands. Uh, if you see that our objectives are uh, mainly uh, to promote and survey exploration of research of faunal um, diversity. CETES uh, is one of the premier research organization doing research from protosa to mammals. If you go any research organization, they have subset of objectives. CETES is the only organization doing research from protosa to mammals. Presently, we are functioning under the Ministry of Environment and Forest. Particularly, yeah, yeah, the fifth five-year plan, our region is, uh, regional centers expanded. And also, if you see, very interestingly, we have four biodiversity hotspots. indo myanmar biodiversity hotspot, Himalayan biodiversity hotspot, Western Ghat, Sri Lanka, and uh, Sundaland biodiversity hotspot. This Andaman and Nicobar uh, Islands is uh, part of two biodiversity hotspots. This Andaman comes under the Sundaland, uh, sorry, Northeast, Myanmar, uh, indo myanmar uh, biodiversity hotspot, and uh, Nicobar comes under the Sundaland biodiversity hotspot. Out of 16 regional centers, uh, eight are located in the four uh, uh, different uh, biodiversity hotspots. This is very, very interesting. And uh, we have two subset of objectives, uh, uh, mainly survey exploration, primary objectives, uh, then taxonomy studies, uh, then uh, preparation of red data book, uh, preparation of database of faunal species, also maintenance of museum. We have museum, all regional centers, as well as uh, headquarters. Uh. Then we also provide uh, training and capacity building. If you see the secondary objectives, uh, we do uh, also molecular ecology studies, DNA fingerprinting, environment impact uh, assessment studies. Also, as I say, uh, we provide a research fellowship, uh, emeritus uh, fellowship program also for retired scientists. We have collaborative research program, both uh, in India as well as other countries. 
So these are the, uh, the sum up of our uh, set aside. Uh, we have more than 5 million uh, preserved specimens. You cannot have anywhere uh, in the, any institution across the uh, globe uh, this much number of specimens, both the dry collections as well as wet, wet collection. We have a museum, both the regional centers as well as uh, uh, headquarters. So overall, uh, we have surveyed all uh, 10 biological bio regions. The number indicating this. Uh, uh, number of species reported from different biological regions. We have uh, molecular lab, uh, uh, our headquarters, and also now we established uh, almost all, all regional centers. So only few they are not uh, established. That also we are working on. And uh, these are some of the galleries. So uh, the renovated gallery in the Indian Museum, Calcutta. And these are some of the mammals gallery in the Indian Museum, Calcutta. So these are uh, some up of our uh, overall achievement. So we have reported more than 1 lakh species from our country. Our own scientists reported more than 500 new species uh, to the science. Yes. And we have more than 5.6 million specimens uh, in our um, repositories. And um, we have generated more than 7,000 uh, DNA sequences. Also, we have our own publication divisions. Uh, in different format of publication, we do uh, state fauna series, uh, ecosystem series, uh, protected area series. And also, we have journals. So we have uh, several publications. Somebody's uh, mic is um, uh, unmuted. Uh, please unmute it. And we have collaborative uh, program with India and other countries. Also, we do uh, receive funds from uh, other uh, sources, now other ministries. So now I'll be moving to Andaman Nicobar Islands. You all might have seen uh, the uh, this uh, uh, map of Andaman Nicobar uh, map. But it was 100 million years ago. Uh, that um, uh, Andaman Nicobar Islands, uh, continue, it was a continuous search to Indian uh, Indo um, in uh, mainland, also South Asian countries. Uh, about 100 million years ago, do, uh, because due to mesozoic um, tectonic movement, uh, it got deducted. Uh, now it is a floating island uh, in the camel back structures. Uh, we have 836 islands, islet, and rocky outcrops over 800 kilometers. Uh, from south to north. So, uh, compared with uh, any other um, our um, eco ecosystem in our country, Andaman Nicobar Islands is rich in biodiversity because of due to isolation and also um, um, very habitat. This Andaman group and Nicobar group is separated by 10 degree channel, which is about 150 kilometer and 400 fathom deep. Our landmass is 8,249 square kilometer. Andaman group covers 6,000 square kilometer and Nicobar is 1,800 square kilometers. So this is a map of Andaman Nicobar Islands. This is Andaman group and Nicobar group. This is separated by 10 degree channel. And if you take overall, in Andaman itself, we can classify Little Andaman group of islands, South Andaman group of islands, Middle Andaman group of islands, and the North Andaman group of islands. Nicobar, we have Central Nicobar, uh, Kar Nicobar and the Little Nicobar and Great Nicobar. Uh, very interestingly, the name, uh, Andaman name, uh, how this uh, derived, uh, this uh, name is a uh, Handuman, it's a Malay word, uh, that uh, Handuman as, uh, over the period uh, is uh, derived as Andaman and the Nakavaram, uh, Nicobar, it's a Tamil name, Nakavaram or land of uh, uh, naked, it's a Indian, which is written in the Tanjavur temple. So these are the name, uh, this, uh, Andaman uh, name derived from Handuman, and, um, which is a Malay words, and Nicobar is derived from Nakawara. And uh, another interesting, we have on a small island in uh, Kachal, uh, the name called Kachal in uh, Central Nicobar group of islands. The first center is Paul in the uh, Kachal group of islands, uh, which is uh, scientifically proved by Royal Greenwich Laboratory. And uh, this is a summary of our uh, islands. Uh, I will not go in details because and we have several peaks. Uh, our highest peak is uh, 732 meter, uh, which is a saddle peak in northern uh, group of island. And the Nicobar group also we have a uh, second highest peak uh, that is Mount Tulia in Great Nicobar Island. And besides, we have a couple of uh, peaks uh, that is the uh, Narcondam Island is uh, one of the peak and the Mount Harriet also is one of the peak. Our coastal morphology, we have sandy beaches, we have rocky beaches, we have mangroves, all type of bay, beach name as uh, coastal area we have. Our length of coastline is uh, 1962 square kilometer. And our climate is a tropical climate. Uh, we are receiving 300 centimeter rain and our temperature is uh, 23 to 31. 
normally uh, yeah, february march and april will be a hot uh, and humid period otherwise we do receive nine months uh, rain we have two volcanic island one is uh, narkondam island which is extinct volcano uh, this is a narkondam uh, this is extinct volcano and barren island it is still active volcano and besides we have mud volcano in uh, north andaman group and also middle andaman group of islands uh, we have limestone cave that is sir also visited limestone cave uh, this is uh, we have more than 250 caves in middle andaman and also another 200 plus in the north andaman group so a lot of bats uh, rodents uh, and uh, small um, um, uh, insect and spiders you can be able to see in this uh, limestone cave then if you take a uh, tribes uh, we have six tribes in andaman group uh, and the Nicobar group of islands. Four are in Andaman group and uh, two are in Nicobar group. If you take Nicobar group, uh, entire Nicobar is declared as a tribal reserve. So once you cannot go without any proper permission from the Andaman Nicobar administration, valid permission. Uh, if you take Nicobar, there are two tribes. That is Nicobar is. Uh, of course, Nicobar is well settled and they Dr. Shiva Parman, I think uh, your screen is frozen. So far, then our uh, South Asian countries, we are so close with other countries uh, than Indian mainland. If you take either Kata uh, or Vaisak or Chennai, almost 1200 kilometers. Uh, but if you uh, see the distance from uh, southernmost point of the Indra point to Sumatra Island, very near, almost 55 or 60 kilometers. Huh? Similarly, if you go northernmost yes, island. Sir. Excuse me, sir. The presentation has just gone uh, gone off the screen. Oh. I think you have to share it once more. The other countries? The presentation, the presentation has just gone off the screen, sir. Okay. You'll have to share it once more. Is it visible now? Uh, yes, sir. You'll just have to put it into full screen. Yeah, now it is okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, okay thank you. Then I'm coming to cellular jail. So one of the oldest uh, jail, uh, which was started construction in the 1896 and uh, completed in the year 1906. Uh, uh, there were uh, 696 cells. Uh, the name, cellular jail, uh, they named because of the individual solitary cell. There were seven wings um, in the olden days. So now only we have three wings. Uh, remaining four wings uh, they demolished because of uh, construction of other purpose. Uh, the cell size, if you see, very, very small in size, uh, 14.8 feet to 8.9 feet in size. Uh, there is only one ventilation and uh, front entry door. And one cell to other cell, uh, they cannot have uh, um, the visibility. They can see the backside of other wings of cell. Uh, and there were uh, more than 30 lakh bricks they used for construction of cellular jail. This um, <clears throat> this uh, um, aerial view of uh, cellular jail, this uh, three wings one is there, but otherwise we had the seven wings. It looked like our uh, clockwise direction. One cell to other cell, cell, they can see only the back side of the cell. The front side they cannot uh, see. And another very, very interesting, Ras Island. Uh, formerly Ras Island, now name changed. Uh, by government of India, Netachi Subhash Chandra Bose Island. Uh, why? Because uh, before independence, Netachi Subhash Chandra Bose, they landed in Andaman and he raised the flag. Uh, so, uh, so only uh, they recently they changed the name. And uh, this island uh, during British period and also during Japanese period, uh, uh, this was used to their headquarters. Um, this is very, very interesting. Uh, even if you visit here, you can see that the old establishment of this is a church, this is our administrative block, uh, and this is uh, this all our canteen and uh, other blocks. 
and this is a side view of one uh, ross island and this is a full view of uh, ross island it's a very, very small island and if you have 20 rupees note to old note uh, you can take and see the back side there will be small lighthouse uh, uh, lighthouse uh, and this lighthouse located in south andaman uh, that is called north bay and we have beaches, of course, and one and a group, so full of beaches. Uh, we, um, wherever you go, you can see uh, white sand and crystal clear water uh, beaches. Uh, but we have one beach called Radhanagar Beach in Havelock Island, which is the uh, best beach in Asia and the seventh best beach in the world, which is reported by uh, Time magazine in the year 2004. Besides, uh, we got the Blue Clock certification. The Government of India, um, they um, uh, selected um, uh, 75 uh, beaches uh, um, and um, um, got the certificate of uh, blue flag certification by UN, uh, UNEP. And another uh, island called Viper Island. Before construction of cellular jail, uh, this island used uh, for the cellular jail purpose. This was used as an open jail. And uh, you know, another is a very interesting sawmill, one of the Asia's sawmill, which was uh, uh, started during British period, uh, still functioning presently is uh, under the control of the Department of Environment Forest. And uh, Andamanikubara Islands uh, is the first uh, place uh, to start the trail service uh, because of uh, strategic point of uh, uh, view. Uh, they started the trail uh, uh, command that is uh, Army, Navy, Air Force. Uh, uh, that the head of the uh, force uh, will be uh, changing uh, from Navy or Navy, Navy, Army or Navy or Air Force. Then southernmost point of our country, uh, which is called as Indra Point. Uh, but uh, most of them, we thought uh, Kanyagumani was the uh, southernmost point of our country. But uh, um, the Indra Point, is, uh, which is in Great Nicobar Island, is the uh, southernmost point of our country. Uh, this is a aerial distant uh, view of yeah, Indra Point, uh, southernmost point of our country. Actually, this lighthouse, uh, before tsunami 2004, this was in the land. Uh, during tsunami, what happened? This, uh, there is a, a changes. Uh, Andaman uh, group is uh, lifted uh, and in uh, um, uh, Nicobar group has gone little bit inside. Uh, so some of the islands completely submerged also. So because of that, uh, uh, this lighthouse is in the water right now. And we have uh, an yeah, air station, which is the southernmost air station in our country that is uh, located in Great Nicobar Island, which is controlled by Indian Navy. Then we have River Galatia, which is in the southernmost uh, uh, island of our country, called River Galatia. It's a perennial river. So this is the mouth of River Galatia. So this is our team. I am going there. So this is a river galaxy. Then besides, there are some more rivers in Great Nicobar Island that is called River Dagmar. Then we have River Alexandra. It's all in Great Nicobar Island. Then this is the southernmost school of our country, which is located in the Great Nicobar Island. And this is the southernmost police station uh, of our country. And this is the southernmost Gurudwara of our country. They are all located in Great Nicobar Island. So this is the northernmost island or uh, island ecosystem. That is uh, landfall. Uh, from main island of North, uh, Northern Island, uh, that is uh, Digli Burtu uh, landfall, we have to go by Fisherman Dinghi almost to four, four and a half hours. And now I'll be coming out to borders of Andamanikubar Islands. Uh, as I said, uh, our landmass is 8,249 square kilometer, uh, of which uh, 6,744 uh, square kilometer. Uh, that means 81 percent of uh, landmass is uh, a protected area. Uh, that is, uh, we have 100, uh, 100 plus protected area, uh, which is a national park, sanctuaries, and only one biosphere reserve we have. And uh, our uh, state animal is uh, Duha. This is an uh, aquatic animal, and our state bird is uh, Andaman wood pigeon, and the state flower is a uh, paima, that is a uh, lagosomia, and our state tree is uh, Andaman padaka. Uh, floral diversity, according to Botanical Survey of India, uh, we have more than 3,400 plant species reported uh, uh, from Andaman Nicobar Islands, uh, which we can classify into various groups that is angiosperm, gymnosperm, pteridophyte, bryophyte, lichen, fungi, and algae. So, of which 14% uh, are endemic. Uh, which you cannot see anywhere in the country. But actually, our fauna and flora are very close affinity with the South Asian countries and Indo-Myanmar. 
um, than our Indian country. So these are some of the flora of Great Nicobar Biosphere Reserve. But Great Nicobar Biosphere Reserve is very, very rich in biodiversity, both the terrestrial, marine, as well as flora. So forest ecosystem, uh, we have, as mentioned by Binay, uh, we have all type of forest. We have great, uh, giant evergreen, uh, we have uh, tropical evergreen, we have um, hilltop uh, tropical evergreen, semi evergreen, deciduous, uh, mangroves, littoral, uh, cane, bamboo. Also, we have plantation also in this island ecosystem. So, let's see what are the um, uh, different type of forest ecosystem. So, these are the um, uh, percentage of various uh, um, type of forest. And we have a tropical evergreen forest, this is an aerial view, South Andaman. This is also top canopy layer of South Andaman, here in a tropical evergreen forest. This is also another view of evergreen forest. Then we have mangroves. Of course, we are in the third position uh, compared with uh, Sundarbans, Gujarat, uh, and uh, third in um, Andaman. Our mangroves are very, very thick and uh, tall mangroves. You can see the uh, trees, uh, all, almost uh, 20, 30 meters height, uh, you can see in the uh, Andaman. Uh, like uh, Sundarbans and um, Gujarat, uh, all standard growth, small uh, trees. But here you can see uh, thick and tall mangroves. So these all are some of the tall mangroves. Then here you can see this picture. We have three layers. Uh, one is uh, this uh, coastal marine, and another one, is second layer is uh, mangrove forest, and third layer is uh, uh, tropical evergreen forest. So these all three habitat in single place. Uh, you can see only in Andaman and Nicobar Group of Islands. Go to our country anywhere in the mangrove areas, either Sundarbans or Pichavara or Gujarat, you can see coastal and marine and mangroves. Uh, you cannot see the tropical evergreen forest. This um, you can see all over uh, Andaman Cover group of islands. And if you have one island called Parrot Island in middle Andaman, uh, if you go on uh, this, uh, the early morning or late evening, you can see that the parakeets are coming for roosting or dispersed from the roosting. Thousands of parakeets uh, uh, you can see there in the Parrot Island. So this is a tropical evergreen. Uh, this is a top layer of uh, Great Nicobar. Again, this is Great Nicobar Island. Then uh, this is another view of uh, Great Nicobar tropical evergreen forest. This is a literal forest. As a top canopy of Great Nicobar, and the next picture you can see this is a Central Nicobar. You can see the similar type of forest. See, this also uh, I took from uh, Central Nicobar group of island. So, similar uh, type of forest you can see all over Nicobar group of island. And we have plantation that is a uh, teak plantation in the south and the moon and also middle and the moon. Then, if you have Padak, this all are 100 years old Padak. We have um, south and the moon as well as middle and the moon. Uh, yes, uh, like uh, Western Ghat, we have grassland also in the Nik Nankori group of one islands, which is particularly Nicobar, uh, Central Nicobar. And the ferns, you all uh, might have heard about the fern. Normally, they attach to the trees and other sources. Uh, so these are the uh, uh, fern. Uh, they will be uh, growing uh, like a tree. So just a minute. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. good afternoon. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, part of the class only I call you, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, shall I call you back, sir? Sir, sir. Uh, these are tree fans. They used to grow up to uh, 20, 30 meters height, like trees. And now I'll be shifting to faunal diversity of Andaman Nicobar Islands. Uh, we have more than 11,000 species of fauna, both the terrestrial as well as the marine ecosystem. Uh, if we take overall, uh, this 10% uh, of fauna is endemic to this island ecosystem because of the isolation. But if we take a uh, group specific, uh, particularly butterflies or moths or birds, uh, we have more than 30 to 40% of endemic to this island ecosystem. So these are the list of fauna which is reported uh, till now. So these are the another uh, group, and uh, this, um, this all uh, number of species reported uh, from Andaman Nicobar group of islands. Uh, so if you take a terrestrial fauna alone, um, insect fauna is uh, has, um, contributing more. Um, among the insect, uh, butterflies and moth is uh, more number of species reported. Butterflies we have 300 plus species, and the moth almost 800 plus species. 
so all uh, more uh, maximum endemic uh, so these are the, some of the common butterfly species you might have seen in uh, the western ghat and uh, even kerala but uh, this uh, tree nim andaman tree nim endemic to andaman group of islands and uh, this andaman clipper uh, this but it is uh, common in mainland also then we have line butterflies these all uh, uh, endemic uh, either species level or sub species level then we have moth group almost 800 plus species of moth recently one of our student submitted a thesis on uh, moth particularly pyralid family and uh, this is waiting for award so this is uh, some of the moths and we have odonates uh, compared with other group we have only 72 species uh, of odonates uh, till now reported from this island ecosystem then we have cicada uh, so whenever you are going forest you are getting the sound so these are the fellows they normally do make uh, sound on um, and forest and then we have beetles almost uh, uh, 600 species of uh, beetles we have then spiders uh, almost uh, four years back uh, this uh, was na not given uh, not much attention in this group uh, last three years uh, we have done good work in this uh, spiders uh, previously we had only 60 plus species uh, now we have 100 plus species uh, some more species we are uh, waiting uh, to declare as a new species or new report of from this and and also one of our student uh, awarded uh, this, uh, this uh, PhD degree on spiders of Andamanikabar group of islands. So these are the, some of the common spiders uh, and uh, very interesting. Actually, I started my career, research career uh, in spiders only under the guidance of Dr. Lisa for my MSc dissertation. After that, uh, I, I started uh, slowly on spiders also. And the reptile amphibians, compared with either mainland or western Ghat, uh, we have very less number of uh, reptiles and amphibians. We have 80 plus species of reptiles and 22 species of uh, amphibians. Uh, uh, maximum are endemic, uh, either species level or subspecies level. Uh, this is Andaman de Jekko, also found, on the, found in the um, uh, Arikana tree, coconut trees and banana trees. Then we have turtles, all species of turtles we have. Then uh, out of three crocodiles, we have saltwater crocodiles in this island ecosystem. So these are the, some of the commonly found uh, reptiles. So, uh, and the one pit paper, and the one island and grass, I think, and the bent powder chapko. So these all are commonly found in the forest ecosystem. Then we have leatherback turtle. So these are the largest turtle. They are coming from South Africa. Uh, they are coming to island, this uh, island, particularly in Nicobar Group of Island, for a lake. Their size is almost 700 kilo. Uh, they normally they do lay egg, uh, 80 to 90 eggs. Uh, uh, then the, they will be hatching after uh, 65 days. So these uh, hatchlings, uh, uh, they are coming out from the nesting site. Then amphibians, uh, uh, for Great Nicobar Bias alone, and there are a lot of uh, endemic species, either species level or subspecies level. So these are the amphibians you can see only in the Great Nicobar group of islands. Then we have reptiles, we have uh, python. Uh, mainland we have rock python, here we have python reticulatus. Uh, we have in, in Nicobar group of islands, we have saltwater crocodiles. Then we have uh, cobra, we have Andaman cobra and also we have king cobra. Then bottom until lizard also we have, um, very commonly you can see. Then I will be moving to my avian diversity. Uh, avian diversity bird studies uh, uh, started during uh, the British period um, by Blythe, B1, Hume and uh, Butler. Uh, and thereafter uh, many scientists, uh, even before independence, after independence also, many scientists from various research organizations, they landed uh, to Andaman Nicobar Islands, uh, mainly they exploring the uh, number of species, uh, only except a few species ecology studies uh, by uh, Sakan. And other than that, uh, there was uh, no detailed ecology studies. Uh, uh, since 2008, uh, we are doing extensively and intensively uh, in the exploration of avian studies in this island ecosystem. Uh, during 2010, we made a checklist of uh, birds of Andaman Nicobar Islands. At that time, we published only 284 species. Uh, because of intensive and extensive studies, uh, now we have crossed almost 380 plus species of uh, birds, both migratory residents. So this we can classify into various groups. 
So I will not go into detail of all group of avifauna. Uh, Some of the important groups I will brief. Uh, we have uh, egrets. We have 19 species of egrets. Uh, egrets, heron, and um, bitterns. Uh, among the among them, uh, only uh, Chinese egret is a migrated species. Uh, remaining all are resident, uh, either species level or subspecies level. And we have all uh, the species. We have little green heron. We have that is really Andaman little green heron. Then we have little Nicobar little green heron. Then median egret. We have Chinese pond heron. We have cattle egret. We have chestnut uh, bittern. Then we have purple heron. Then we have large egret. Then Pacific uh, egret. So these all we have in Andaman Nicobar group of islands. Then open bill stock. Like mainland, we don't have uh, not much stock. Um, yeah, of course, mainland we have eight species of stoker, but here we have only one species. Uh, and then this uh, species, uh, open bill stoker, it was introduced uh, during uh, uh, 30s for control of uh, African snails, uh, but they could not establish the population. But what happened a couple of years back, uh, there was a fire effect uh, in the Sumatra island. Uh, because of the fire effect, uh, all these uh, fellows, so they migrated uh, from Sumatra to uh, Andaman group and also Nicobar group. Uh, nowadays, we are regularly finding this uh, species in Nicobar group of islands. Then we have ducks and teals. We have 12 species of duck, uh, ducks and teals, all uh, migratory except Andaman teal and uh, lesser whistling teal. Uh, this is a cotton teal, one of the smallest individual, weighing 150 uh, gram. And uh, these are some of the uh, ducks, migratory ducks. We have comb duck. We have Ferrigin Pochard, Northern Pintail, Mandarin Duck. Then uh, these are some more. This is a lesser residential resident throughout the uh, year. We can see remaining all mi migratory. We have Reddy Shell Duck, Gargany, Northern Shoulder, and uh, Common Tail. So this is a small clipping of cut, uh, Dutch and Tail. The order and symptoms is one of the order of glass species contains about 108 species of birds, 62 families, the ethnomidae and sedanidae and the anatomy, which includes over 100 species of waterfowl. All species in this model are well-known for conditions and have a large white with a specialized tongue that allows water to be sucked in the first place. Uh, this is Andaman teal, it's a uh, endemic species. Huh? Then we have kites, eagle. We have 33 species of uh, kites and uh, eagles. That is a raptors. Uh, uh, all uh, uh, endemic, uh, either species level or subspecies level. So we have um, white bellied eagle. Wherever you go to beaches, uh, very commonly you can see white bellied eagle. It's a very gigantic species. Uh, and we have Andaman uh, crested serpent eagle. So endemic to Andaman group of island. This is subspecies level. And we have great nicobar serpent eagle. Among the eagles, this is one of the smallest individual. That is a great nicobar serpent eagle. Found only the great nicobar and the little nicobar group of islands. Then we have black crested basa. This endemic subspecies level. But their sister species, there, you can see Indian mainland, uh, also Southeast Asia. Then we have Andaman serpent eagle. Uh, endemic to Andaman group of islands. We have 30 pure endemic. Uh, you cannot see anywhere in the globe. If anybody wants to see those 30 species, you have to come down to Andaman group of islands. Andaman are Nicobar group of islands. Then Passat, then Andaman crested serpent eagle, then Chinese parahawk, which is migratory. Then the small clipping of raptors. You can see. Raptors also known as birds of prey, are divided into two main groups, the diurnal and nocturnal birds of prey. 
they are meat eating birds that share characteristics such as keen eyesight, hook bills, and sharp talons, and include eagles, kites, hawks, falcons, vultures, ospreys, and owls. They are among the top carnivores in most of the ecosystems, with prey size ranging from mice and reptiles to large hares and ducks. Raptors play an important role in ecosystems in several ways. The presence of raptors in the wild town serves as the barometer of ecological health. Out of 572 species of raptors found in the world, 106 species, both diurnal and nocturnal, are distributed in India. 44 species, subspecies of raptors, and The great Nicobar eagle is endemic to the forest of Great Nicobar and Little Nicobar Islands. The white-bellied sea eagle is a large diurnal bird of prey. This species is closely related to Sandford's sea eagle of the Solomon Islands. They feed on a wide variety of aquatic animals, including fish, sea snakes, water birds, and marine turtles. They are found most commonly in coastal areas of Andaman and Nicobar Islands. The Andaman serpent eagles is also known as Andaman Dark Serpent Eagles and found in the forest of Andaman Islands. This is an endemic species to Andaman group of islands. The owls are distributed in two distinct families under the order Strychformus, which includes about 200 species of mostly solitary and nocturnal. They have large and broad head binocular vision and feathers adapted for silent flight. Owls feed on small mammals, insects, and other birds, although a few species specialize in hunting fish. Seven species of owls are found in Andaman and Nicobar Islands. So another group called uh, Mehapod. Also, uh, we have 22 species of mahapod in uh, our uh, world, uh, of which uh, two species we have. One is uh, Central Nicobar, another one is Great Nicobar, Little Nicobar. Uh. So, very interestingly, this uh, species belongs to the order Galliformes. Uh. They are the ground nesting bird, uh, almost uh, 700 uh, uh, gram weight uh, of uh, the adult. Uh, uh, species. Uh, they normally do construct that uh, mud nest in the ground. They are using almost four tons of soil for construction of mud nest. They lay the egg uh, the um, mud nest and uh, cover the eggs with the leaf litters and uh, debris. Uh, but they will not brood like other species of birds. The egg will be getting the natural heat and will be hatching. And normally, yes. then we have crates, uh, uh, water hen, moor hen, and uh, this is Andaman crate, uh, which is very commonly um, found in the Andaman group of island forest area. It is an endemic species. Then we have white breast water hen, they are the uh, subspecies endemic. Uh, we even within the Nicobar group of island, we have variations. And we have peasant jasana. This is normally found in the floating uh, vegetated wetlands in South America. Then migrates uh, normally called uh, badass or shoreboard. Remember the east coast or west coast. Uh, and the also we are giving number of species. Uh, and they are the true migratory coming from Central Asian countries. The size varied from 12 to 22 centimeters. Uh, normally found in the shallow water and uh, mud flats. So if we take uh, migrate, migration, the birds which they are using for that uh, um, travel or migration, they do call the migratory flyways. Um, we have uh, nine flyways in the world. Uh, out of nine, five are very, very important. Out of five, 
two flyways we have in India. One is a Central, yeah, Central Asian Indian flyway. This is a pink color. Another one is a East Asian Australasian flyway. Our Andaman Nicobar group of islands, East Coast and also Northeastern part of our country, covered by Central East Asian Australasian flyway. This is a Central Asian flyway starting from Northern Hemisphere and come up to this Indian subcontinent. Other than uh, water birds, passerine birds also using this flyway. Almost 300 plus species they are using in this flyway. Uh, out of uh, 300, uh, great knot, curlew sandpaper, and little sink are the very, very important species uh, in this migratory flyway. Then, East Asian uh, Australian flyway. Uh, the, uh, this flyway is very, very important and uh, they are covering 22 countries uh, um, and uh, 50 million migratory water birds using this uh, flyway. Out of 50 million, 5 million migratory birds, they are taking migration every year. So uh, uh, in this flyway also, there are some important species that is bar-tailed godbait, spoon-billed sandpiper, black-faced spoon-bill are the key species in the East Asian Australasian flyway. This flyway starting from Siberia, Alaska and uh, going up to New Zealand. Our island, we are getting birds from uh, um, normally uh, September to March or April. Almost 500 plus species of using this flyway. So, they're very, very interesting. Uh, this is the latest record. A four month old bald tail guardway. They traveled uh, 8,425 miles. That is a uh, 1358 kilometers and covered 11 days that is from alaska to tasmania and these are the longest migratory species they are flying 11 to 12 days non-stop almost 13,000 kilometers they are flying normally from alaska to new zealand besides there are some more species regnet stint green spotted green shank which normally they cross bangladesh or winter into india so this is the flyway that is a migratory route from Alaska to New Zealand. Uh, that is onward journey, but the return journey they do take us a couple of uh, stop or side. So this is the latest map that is Alaska to Tasmania. So these are some of the migratory birds which we studied uh, migration. That is a bottle guardweed. Then these are the spotted in uh, the uh, the important migratory bird areas in the East Asian Australasian flyway. And then another very, very interesting species, that is Arctic tern. Uh, this uh, fellow, uh, they are flying from Arctic to Antarctic. You can imagine that is a 90,000 kilometer they are taking migration every year. Uh, when I was in Antarctica, I could be able to see this fellow uh, during a migratory season. And this is the longest migratory season fellow. And uh, they are, again, this is uh, an Arctic and they are going up to an, uh, uh, Antarctica. Then another very, very interesting uh, species called the Bartel Godwit. They are crossing the uh, Mount Everest, Himalayan Mount Everest, almost 29,000 feet uh, height. They are flying to cross from Mongolia to come down to our uh, Indian India. But of course, we don't go in um, our island. But uh, this, uh, uh, for an uh, interesting point of view, I showed this uh, height of the migratory species. Then these are the shore birds. If you go to cold land or uh, nearby wetlands of uh, Trichur, you can see these are the fellows. Even during my PhD thesis, I have seen all species in the cold wetlands. Uh, Wimbrel, Karlu, Plover, Kentish Plover, Grey Plover, Pacific Golden Plover, then Marsh and Piper. This all you can see in the cold wetland. Then these are some more species. And this is endemic. This is a beach stone plover. It's an endemic species. Remaining all migrates. Then we have forest species, that is uh, um, Andaman wood pigeon, a forest area. Then we have Nicobar wood pigeon, then emerald. Uh, this is a uh, green, uh, sorry, Nicobar pigeon. Name only Nicobar pigeon, but uh, we can have this uh, this fellow in uh, Andaman group. And also they have distribution in the entire South Asian country. Uh, this is the only species in the genus Colonus, And they are close relatives to that our extreme bird of blues and passenger pigeons. Then the parakeet, we have six species of parakeets. There's, uh, among the parakeets, is the la largest parakeet, Alexander parakeet. So this is a small clipping of parakeets. Parakeets belong to the family of the cascades, and the word parakeet is used of the They are small to medium sized birds with about eight inches. Feathers rather than having the 
Then we have owls, we have barn owls, um, we have only one species of owl, barn owl. Then we have seven species of other group of the owls. And we have Andaman scope owl, all endemic, uh, Nicobar scope owl and oriental, Andaman oriental scope owl. Then you have hawk owl, and then plumes hawk owl. It's all endemic. Then we have 11 species. Uh, the, these are the fellows, they are uh, habitat specific. The Andaman rudy kingfisher. It's a very, very commonly found in the mangrove ecosystem. Um, um, you cannot see open wetland. And another uh, species of oriental drop kingfisher. They are the forested species. Wherever a wetland, uh, is, wetland or water bodies, uh, streams is there in the uh, forest area. You can see this below. That is the oriental drop kingfisher. Of course, blue-eyed kingfisher can see all wetland. So these are the uh, kingfishers. We have black capital kingfisher. This is the only migratory species. Remaining all uh, endemic. And we have beetles, three species of beetles, then hornbill. Uh, this is uh, one of the very, very important species in the ecology point of view. They found in the North Kondam Island, first discovered by Evo Him and named after this island. Uh, among the hornbills, this is one of the smallest species and having smallest home range. The male, female, hornbill. Then we have woodpecker. Compared to mainland, we have only uh, three species. Only. In the mainland, we have 33 species of woodpecker, but we have Andaman woodpecker, is endemic, and another prickle um, breasted woodpecker is an endemic subspecies. So these are endemic uh, species found in the Andaman group of islands. We have 21 species of uh, endemic. We have um, bulbul, Andaman bulbul, Andaman shama. Uh, mainland, we have uh, different species of or tree pie. We have only one species that is Andaman tree pie, then uh, white red starling, Andaman rango, Andaman cuckoo dove, then we have Nicobar cuckoo dove, and then hornbill, then we have cocker. Mainland also we have, even Kerala also we have, Sandropus sinensis, uh, this is uh, Sandropus andamanensis. Uh. Then we have Andaman green bee, uh, here mainland one normally we do call the Pamudar green bee, but it is Andaman green bee, which is endemic. Then we have woodpecker, Andaman tail, then serpent eagle. So these are 21 species are endemic to this island ecosystem. Andaman group. And then we have Nicobar group also. Then Great Nicobar, there are species specific. Uh, such species are uh, full species endemic. So these are some other species found only, particularly in the Great Nicobar Biosphere Reserve. So, so of course, there will be a reputation of uh, species. Uh, so I will not go. Then uh, compared to mainland, uh, the mainland we have 430 species. Uh, uh, here we have only 66 species of uh, rodent mammals. Uh, out of 66, uh, uh, maximum are uh, uh, bats and uh, rodents. Uh, we don't have larger animals. Uh, of course, we have elephants and spotted deer, uh, but uh, those uh, fellows are not uh, native to this island. So our larger animals are uh, Andaman wild boar. Then we have long-tailed macaque. And we have tree shoes. We have Andaman tree shoe. Uh, this one Andaman tree shoe. We have Nikupa tree shoe. And we have uh, the civet, palm civet. And this is a Narcondom tree shoe. Uh, recently, we reported uh, it's a new to science from Narcondom Island. And the Great Nicobar, Great Nicobar is a very, very rich in biodiversity, uh, um, both the terrestrial ecosystem and as well as the marine ecosystem. And uh, this is a long tail macaca found only in the Nicobar group of islands, that is in three islands Little Nicobar, uh, Great Nicobar, and Kachala Island. 
and we have crab coconut crab actually this is uh, one of the uh, terrestrial crab which can grow up to 4 kilo and normally they do climb the coconut trees and do lot of damages and there is a only uh, you know, going to see uh, during breeding season remaining entire life period they live in the uh, land side so this is a long tail macaque So thank you. So I am not touching the marine um, diversity. Uh, if we have time, I can go for uh, marine diversity also. Maybe up, uh, another 15 20 minutes. Uh, so thank you so much, Dr. Shiva Parman. I really hope that we'll call you another day so that we can have a detailed idea about the marine diversity. Uh, okay. so, uh, thank you so much uh, for your very, very erudite talk. It was as though we were actually present in the Enderman Nicobar. We felt that we were actually present in the Enderman Nicobar. So it was a very enlightening experience for our students. So I'll be inviting Dr. Villa K. John uh, to deliver the vote of thanks. Uh, because uh, the college has just uh, finished its regular classes right now. Many of our students are eager to leave for their buses also. So that is why we are not having an interaction session as planned before. So I invite Dr. Vimla K. John. Respected delegates uh, from the dais, in the offline and online, and uh, principal, head of the department in Dean of Science, Dr. C.F. Binar, and my dear colleagues, dear students, and now it is arrived by the NSS and NCC parents uh, and volunteers. Uh, it was a wonderful and marvelous experience to you and us because we have seen the wonderful creatures of this nature. And actually, last one hour, it was a wonderful session, which is shared by Dr. Shiva Perumar. And uh, biodiversity of Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Actually, I have heard uh, Shiva Perumar uh, from my colleagues, Dr. C.F. Binoy and uh, Dr. Joyce. Uh, the session was very much enlightened and made some part to some of the students to doing research in the biodiversity field. And uh, in the beginning of this session, we have seen the objectives and the uh, major um, grants which are uh, supplied by ZSI. And uh, so actually, it was a sparking and enlightening session. So we express our sincere gratitude to Dr. Shropirumar in the uh, depart from the Department of Zoology, St. Thomas College, Bishop. Then, next, I would like to express our sincere gratitude uh, to our, the torch bearer of our uh, institution, our principal, Dr. Martin Gay, for the support to us and enlighten us each and every program. And uh, he is always with us for his uh, enlightening works. Thank you, for Father Martin, for um, for his uh, inaugural address, which we have done by this wonderful session. Next, we will uh, thankful to our head of the department and dean of science, Dr. C. F. Binoy, who support us and uh, um, encourage us for doing this uh, wonderful session for our students. Thank you, Binar, sir, for this wonderful opportunity for gifting the students. Next, I would like to thank our coordinator, Dr. Joyce. She's actually a wonderful biodiversity scientist. And uh, I call her as a scientist because uh, she's doing a lot of work and uh, she was actually found out a new species nowadays. 
so wonderful thanks to Joyce who organized this uh, wonderful session to our students. Yes, I would like to thankful to our uh, colleagues and their supporting team to make this session very fruitful and effective. Thank you once again, once again to all. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Vimla. Uh, this session will be ending here. Uh, thank you so much once more, Dr. Shiva Kurman. I know that you are a very senior scientist in ZSI and just reading your credentials itself, uh, it, it seems very exhilarating. But from my personal viewpoint, when I look at you, when I think of you, you will always see me by senior Shiva. And I always remember the time when you used to sit in front of the computer, fine tuning your research, and we juniors would be sitting behind and uh, we would be asking you doubts. We would be having casual conversations. And uh, that was, you know, a very sweet type of learning where directly or indirectly, they were able to learn a lot from you. Even for this session, uh, in spite of all the shortcomings, had it been anybody else, na naturally they would have lost the temper because we had a five minutes delay, 10 minutes delay, but you handled it very gracefully. So we are hoping for a long collaboration with you. Many of my students, they want to do research. And even Dr. Binoy, uh, he also has an association with you. So I hope in the long run, you may be able to visit our institution and maybe we will also fulfill our dream and visit uh, your institution and my students will be able to learn more from you. We have another program just after this. So we'll be exiting this meeting uh, and uh, hopefully I'll call you in the evening, sir. Thank you so much, sir.